when it comes to preparing to convert your standard data to a table, it may be good to go as is, or you may need to do just a little bit of cleanup and adjusting before you make the conversion. In order to determine what needs to be done, it helps to understand a little bit of the terminology and the criteria or requirements for tables. First, let's go through just a little bit of basic terminology regarding lists and tables in Excel. Another term that we'll often hear is a database. A database really is a generic term for an organized collection of information arranged in rows and columns consisting of fields and records. Anytime I hear rows and columns, it certainly reminds me of a worksheet. So I think we probably have this one covered. When we talk about that database, though, a couple more terms come up. And the first is a field. A field is a column in Excel. They are interchangeable. It's the smallest unit of information in a database. It would be things like last name, first name, address, item number, cost, quantity, any of those different pieces of information that you need to work with in your daily routines. The second term is a record. Just like a field is equivalent to a column, a record is equivalent to a row. And the row contains the fields of data that are somehow related to one another. For example, if we have a table or a list or a database for people, there might be a record for you. You might be on row two. There might be a record for me. I might be on row seven. There may be a record for your friend who might be on row 2,432. You get the idea. All of the information, all of the fields across a single row are related to one another. There is a special kind of row, though, and it's called a header row. This is the row in a database or a list or a table that actually has the names of the fields. Now, there's nothing special about this. They're just text cells. Frequently, it's row one, but it does not necessarily have to be row one. And also, technically speaking, a header row is not required. But if you've ever tried to look at data that isn't labeled, you wonder, well, which one is which? Which one is the amount paid and the amount due, for example? So even though it's technically not required, I would like to say you should always have a header row. Now, I've introduced a couple of different terms, and I just want to be clear here. A list is the region of a spreadsheet that Excel identifies as a database. Neither a list nor a database by themselves are a table. A table is something specific that we're going to be learning how to create. A table is an area specifically designated, and that's what enables all of the special functionality and formatting features that we've heard so much about with tables. So even though this particular series is about tables, let's take a moment to review lists. Lists are very simple, and we don't have to do anything to create them. Excel is simply going to identify that it is data that belongs together. That happens because it has field names or labels across a row. Sometimes row one, but it doesn't have to be row one. Those field names have to be comprised of at least two columns of data. Just one column doesn't cut it. Those field names that go across a row are going to be immediately followed by at least two rows of data. In other words, two records. These do need to fall immediately below the header row. A very important concept to remember is that there can be no completely blank rows or columns within the data because Excel will disregard anything to the right of an empty column or anything below an empty row. For most people, list, database, and table will be used interchangeably. What we need to know is that technically speaking, they are not the same thing. Excel recognizes a list and does a few things on its own without us having to do anything. But remember that table requires some specific configuration. So what do we do or how do we differentiate data tables from lists? Well, data tables are going to include the basic tools that are available from a list, plus many, many, many more. Formally identifying something as a table enhances features and formatting. Other than that, it has the same data requirements as an automatic list. It should have labels that go across a row that will be the header row. It should have at least two of those fields. It should be followed by at least two records or two rows of data with no completely empty blank columns or blank rows. Now, even though we have a lot of added functionality and enhancements with the table, there are a couple of things that we have to be aware of. And that is that when your data is formatted as a table, there are a couple of things you can't do. For example, you cannot create subtotals. 
and you cannot sort by columns left to right. In the grand scheme of things, though, the benefits that tables provide us really far outweighed the inability to do these few things. And there actually are some ways to get around working with these in a table as well. So with that little bit of terminology and theory behind us, let's go ahead and clean up some actual data that will eventually be turning into a table. I'm currently working in the Preparing Data File. If you want to follow along, you can find this file in the Chapter 2 folder in your Working Files folder. Now, I don't want to make this a bigger deal than it has to be. Depending on the complexity of your data, there may be a lot of work or almost no work to do. I just want to point out some of the things that we've been talking about. First of all, this worksheet has a title that's been entered called Sales, and it's been merged and centered across most of row one. We don't need this. The table will already have many different ways to identify the data, and this is just kind of taking up space. So the first thing we'll do is go ahead and simply remove this extra row. Now what we should be happy to see is that row one currently does include what will become our header row. There are several text entries that describe what the data is that follows in that column. Column A is invoice number, column B is last name, and so forth. So this is a good start. If we didn't have this information, we would want to go ahead and put it in. Another little hint is to make sure that you take a look at those. Are those the labels that you want? Are they fairly succinct and short, but also descriptive? Now, the next thing that we notice is something that we need to get rid of. A blank row has been added to row two. The initial purpose was probably to separate the labels from the data. Now, there are many better ways to do that, even under the best of circumstances that has nothing to do with tables but we definitely do not want a completely blank row. It's not that any of these things will actually cause problems. It's just going to make it simpler and more automated if we clean it up ahead of time. So we're going to take out row two. Now, as we're working, we may have noticed over to the right-hand side of the data, somebody has been working with some labels and some extra calculations. We can see that this data actually starts over in column K. It's important to realize that a table does not have to be all on its own on a worksheet. There can be other data. As a matter of fact, there can even be other tables on the same worksheet. But we do want to separate these. Again, it's going to make it easier for Excel to automatically find the table and work with it. So we'll just right click on column K, insert a completely blank column between our data and this extra stuff, and we'll call it good. All right, so we have a header row. We have at least two columns or fields. We have at least two rows of data that immediately follows the header row. And any extra information is separated from what will become our table by at least one completely empty row or column. That means we should be in pretty good shape. And we're now ready to take the next step, which is to actually convert this regular data range into a table.